What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony and today we are in the all new completely redesigned 2020 Ford Escape courtesy of Bob Ruth Ford in Dillsburg, PA. And I gotta say, I, I really do like the redesign of this thing, so I am quite excited to go ahead and get started. So, as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 Ford Escape. First one being the S, starting at $24,885. Then you have the SE, which is actually the one we are in today, starting at $27,095. SE Sport Hybrid for $28,255. SEL trim level will start at $29,255. And lastly, the Titanium, starting at $33,400. But so then the options continue, because when it comes to the power plant on the 2020 Escape, there are actually three different power plants available and they're gonna depend on the trim level that you go with essentially. But first one being a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline three cylinder engine that is gonna to belong to the S, SE, and SEL trim levels. Therefore, the engine setup that we have today but this one is gonna put out 180 horsepower, 177 pound-feet of torque, sent to front wheels or all wheels. All wheel drive is a $1,500 option, by the way. That power is sent to the ground through an eight-speed automatic, giving you MPG numbers at 27 in the city, 33 on the highway. Did wanna also mention there is an auto start-stop system that comes standard with that, so therefore we are sitting at a red light right now, and the 2020 Escape has turned off, therefore saving even more MPG numbers, so that is pretty cool that that's there as well. But in addition to that, for the 2020 Escape, there is a brand new feature for this one called cylinder deactivation. And that is gonna essentially allow this turbocharged three cylinder to act as a two cylinder engine when you're cruising or decelerating, helping you save even more miles per gallon. So that is a crazy thought to think that you could be operating on a two cylinder engine while cruising down the highway. But in turn, it is definitely gonna save you some MPG. So that's quite interesting. But so now let's go ahead and move on to that next available engine setup being a 2.5 liter inline four cylinder hybrid engine. And this engine setup is actually gonna come standard on the SE Sport Hybrid and Titanium trim level as well actually. But this one puts out 198 horsepower, 153 pound feet of torque, sent to front wheels or all wheels once again, but this time through a CVT transmission. So that's gonna be a major difference between those two engine setups there. And MPG numbers on this particular engine setup are actually not quite available yet, at least at the time of this video being made. And then the last engine setup, which is an available option for the SEL and titanium trim levels, being a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, 250 horsepower, 275 pound feet of torque, a beast of an engine for the Escape. With that power being sent to all four wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters on this particular engine setup, zero to 60, approximately 7.4 seconds. This one actually recommends 93 octane, so premium unleaded fuel for that engine setup, regular unleaded for the others. So yet another difference between those engine setups there. Did want to also mention though, before we do any kind of acceleration, that engine start stop system, when you come to a red light or a stop sign, you can actually turn that off. A lot of people always ask that. And that button's located right behind the shifter and the electronic parking brake as well, actually. But, but I did want to mention that because that does annoy some people, although it does help save miles per gallon. But either way, you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and find an open road. Let's do a quick little acceleration here and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Ford Escape here up to speed. Here we go. It's pretty much as expected. It's actually not bad considering it's a turbocharged three cylinder, but kind of more than I expected. Definitely not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway, but I always prefer a little more power, so I, I myself would opt for the two liter turbocharged engine setup for the SEL or titanium, but still actually not a bad engine setup for this one. Actually surprising, again, considering it's a turbocharged three cylinder, so kind of nice. Then to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important, and so you will find four wheel disc brakes for every single trim level. That is one thing that I absolutely love about this one, not the four wheel disc brakes, of course, that's nice, but the braking feel is amazing. Actually, on the 2020 
escape immediately brings you to a stop, at least in my short test drive today so far. So well done Ford for that. Probably one of the first things I noticed, and that may not be a big deal to some people, but having driven hundreds of cars at this point, it's a big deal to me and I really like it in the escape. But touching on suspension and handling a little bit, this is a big one. All new suspension for the 2020 Ford Escape. Up front, of course, McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, a multi-link rear suspension. As far as the steering feel goes, it actually feels really good. Still not quite as good as the Mazda CX-5 as far as steering feel goes. That is still the best in my books, but the 2020 Escape has definitely improved when it comes to the steering feel. It feels great in this thing. Touching on ride quality, definitely no issues there. I've actually gone over several railroad tracks already in this test drive and certainly no issues with soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections as far as cabin noise goes it is a very quiet cabin in the 2020 escape guys can probably notice i'm a bit loud probably in this video because there isn't a whole lot of exterior noises coming into the cabin so well done for there and as far as visibility goes i can see perfectly fine out the back we'll say the second row headrests are kind of beefy but still you're not going to be looking at those headrests you're going to be looking at the window behind you so really absolutely no issues with visibility so and i did want to mention there is an optional head-up display for the titanium trim level only so that is going to assist with forward visibility helping you keep your eyes better on the road so that is a plus as well but that pretty much wraps up the performance segment of this review let's go ahead and make our way to the exterior because as i have mentioned at the beginning of this video it looks great and it has been completely redesigned so let's go ahead and take a look at the new 2020 ford escape all right, you guys, so as I just mentioned, all new exterior for the new 2020 Ford Escape. Absolutely love the redesign, actually. I think it looks so cool for 2020. And by the way, I did want to also mention, this is called the Ford Kuga over in Europe, in case you guys overseas are looking at this vehicle on this video as well. So, did want to mention that. Anyways, up front, you are going to have a large black mesh front grille. And overall, when it comes to the front design, one thing at least that stood out to me is it does have a Tesla-style front end if you were to remove that front grille and perhaps just painted it the same color as the vehicle i would say it looks a lot like a tesla just because of the way this front end goes straight down right at that particular point i don't know maybe it's just me feel free to put it in the comments if you agree or disagree with me but i kind of do think it looks like a tesla style front end which is a good thing i do like the front end of tesla so well done ford for that taking a look at the headlights halogen reflector headlamps will come with the s trim level halogen projector headlamps for the se sel and sport trim levels and if you were to go with the titanium you will find led headlights there with led signature lighting by the way as well and i did want to also mention black housings are going to come standard for every single trim level it's definitely something that really looks good in my opinion a lot of manufacturers will leave those clear housings but the black just makes it look a little bit more aggressive and it ties together a lot better with that black mesh front grille as well but fog lights can be found on the sel and titanium trim levels and actually that titanium is going to give you led fog lights but of course we do not have them today since we do have the se trim level but let's go ahead and make our way to the side you will find those chrome window surrounds on the upper portion there if you go with all trim levels but the s and the sport those two trim levels are going to give you black window surrounds in case you were curious roof rails can be found on the sel and titanium if you wanted them taking a look at the side mirrors you will get black side mirrors for the s trim level and the sport once again body colored side mirrors for all other trim levels though and they will be heated for the se trim level and up and i also wanted to mention body colored door handles are going to come in the se trim level and up as well but now let's go ahead and take a look at the wheel setup 17 inch steel wheels with covers will come with the s trim level 17 inch aluminum alloy wheels for the se and sport 18 inch aluminum alloy wheels for the sel and 19 inch aluminum alloy wheels for the titanium in case you were interested and by the way if you happen to walk onto a ford dealer's lot that is one easy way to easily distinguish between the trim levels but let's go ahead and make our way to the back up top there you are going to get that shark fin antenna along with a rear spoiler with an integrated brake light as well by the way just below that rear window wiper one of the new things that the ford escape is now doing is the escape lettering spelled out horizontally just under the ford 
Ford badge. Another nice little upscale touch, I think, in my opinion, that the Ford Escape is now doing. So definitely a fan of that. And of course, just below that in the lower left-hand corner there, you are going to get trim level badging. Yet another easy way, I guess, to determine the trim level when you're looking at it. Taillight design has definitely been altered for 2020. Definitely looks good in my opinion, though. I do like the more aggressive lines that can be found back there. And just below it all, this is one of the best parts about this. You will find those silver accents around the exhaust, but the exhaust itself, dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips for every single trim level in a world where so many SUVs right now are tucking the exhaust away up underneath the vehicle. I do love that Ford leaves them exposed and makes them look good and puts it dual exhaust outlet rather than a single exhaust outlet. Just a more aggressive look in my opinion. But you guys know what we have to do next. Having mentioned that, as always, here is that 2020 Ford Escape exhaust clip. So, but now since we are around back, when it comes to opening that rear hatch, there actually is a manual lift gate for the S, S, E, and Sport trim levels. However, you will get a hands free lift gate for the S, E, L, and Titanium. So, therefore, since we do have the S, E, the way to go about opening that rear lift gate is there is a rubberized button just underneath of the license plate there. Simply just lift up underneath of that. And if you were to close it, there actually is a grab handle up on the lift gates. That makes closing it a little bit easier as well. But once opened up, Cargo capacity is going to come in at 37.8 cubic feet. If that wasn't enough space for you, however, there is a 60-40 split, meaning those rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 68.5 cubic feet. Definitely a good bit of space there. Did want to also mention there is uh, what looks like LED cargo lighting back there, so that was pretty cool. 12 volt power outlet can also be found in that cargo area, and if you lift up underneath of the floor of that cargo area, you will find a spare tire along with some in-floor storage compartmentalized. So that is pretty cool that that's there as well. But let's go ahead and make our way to the rear legroom. That is going to come in at 38.8 inches. So for reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. For those rear passengers, there is also a rear center armrest with cup holders. That's always nice. Rear ventilation you can find on the SE trim level and up. And there is a 12 volt power outlet once again for those rear passengers. Although I will say, wouldn't have minded some USB charging ports in that second row as well. And I will say though, I was plenty comfortable comfortable in those rear seats. One of the interesting things that this new 2020 Escape does though, if you look at the doors, there are kind of, uh, I'm going to call them stars or diamonds kind of imprinted into the doors. And you know, a lot of manufacturers will do different things there. Some will put a leather finish or aluminum trim accents or whatever, but I think this is the first time I've seen the diamond or star imprints into the doors. So something a little bit different. It's not a bad or a good thing. It's a different thing, which I kind of like. But anyways, let's go ahead and make our way to the front seat seats, manually adjustable seats you will find with the S trim level 10-way power adjustable driver's seat for the SE Sport and SEL. So having played around with that 10-way power adjustable driver's seat today, I can definitely tell you no issues with finding your perfect driving position there. If you wanted a power adjustable passenger seat as well, simply go with the titanium trim level though. And you will find cloth seating for the S, SE, and Sport trim levels, an active X seating material for the SEL, which is kind of a more stain resistant resistant fabric and more durable as well essentially but heated front seats you can find on the SE trim level and up. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the steering wheel. One of the first things I noticed it is those 10 and 2 grips are kind of bolstered a little thicker than most other manufacturers so I do actually love that. So steering wheel feels great. It is tilt and telescoping. You will find a urethane steering wheel for the S and SE. It will be leather wrapped for the sport trim level and up and heated if you were to go with the SEL or titanium trim level but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your ford logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock and unlock at least for the se trim level that we have today did want to mention there is a remote start however that you can find on that key fob if you were to go with the sel trim level or titanium but 
Either way, you will get a push button start for the SE trim leveling up. And that push button start button is kind of in an interesting position on the Escape here. It is above the driver's right knee and kind of just below the gauges. It is not necessarily facing outward towards the driver. So that is why I did want to emphasize that, but that is where it's located. So all I am going to do, simply put my phone on the brake and press that engine start button there. And so, but then once started up, as far as the gauge setup goes, this is how the gauges will look for every single trim level, but the titanium and the sport trim levels, those sport and titanium trim levels will actually give you a 12.3 inch fully digital gauge cluster. So if you were interested in that, those are the two trim levels that you're gonna wanna go with. But if you did not go with one of those, you will find what you are currently looking at, giving you a tachometer on the left, speedometer on your right, small digital display front and center at the top there and to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls on the right side of the steering wheel. And so there's quite a bit of extra things you can check out up there, giving you trip A, trip B. There is actually a cool looking digital speedometer with a blue circle around it. I thought that was pretty cool looking. Outside temperature, of course, there's some safety information, compass and radio settings. There's a bunch of other stuff, honestly, and actually shows you a cool little picture of the Ford Escape up there as well. I thought that was pretty cool. But anywho, let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. If you wanted a panoramic moonroof on the 2020 Escape, that is going to be an available option for the SE trim level and up adding $1,495. It's actually not standard on any particular trim level though, but that's how you're going to get that. Ambient lighting comes standard with the titanium. There's going to be an overhead sunglass holder just up top here for every single trim level. And again, in those doors, there's that indented diamond pattern. So I thought that was pretty cool. Aluminum trim found just below the tech display as well as on the doors. And because I don't think I've mentioned it already, as far as that eight speed automatic, goes that is going to be the circular dial type of shifter as opposed to an actual traditional shifter that you may be used to but that circular dial can also be found in the Shelby GT500 that's about to come out so that is pretty cool I guess you could say but either way just in front of that you're going to find a small cargo area with a rubberized bottom preventing things from sliding around there is actually a phone charger up there as well as another 12 volt power outlet charger just behind that again electronic parking brake there's going to be a couple cup holders just behind that cargo area as well. And behind all of that, a center armrest for the driver and passenger, along with a USB charging port within that armrest and another rubberized bottom within there. And there are a couple pen or pencil holders actually as well. And unlike in my Mustang, it does not specify which one you have to put in there, whether it be a pen or pencil. <laughs> Always found that funny, but either way, good bit of space actually in that center console. So let's now go ahead and check out the tech display. Sync system is going to come with the S. However, if you go with the SE trim level and up, you will get what you're looking at right now, which is the Sync 3 system, which gives you an 8 inch color touchscreen display, giving you Bluetooth and audio streaming, as well as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Meaning, if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Escape, and therefore you have free navigation through that smartphone, as well the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs up there and there's a couple other apps that are compatible with that system as well. Factory navigation system is going to be an available option for an additional $695 if you wanted it. Climate control information you could check out up there as well and of course as expected your radio settings and by the way six speaker sound system is going to come with the S, S, E, Sport and SEL trim levels if you were to go with the titanium you guys know that is going to be an upgraded sound system. Ten speakers Bang and Olsen mix that sound system with the subwoofer by the way but we do not have that one we do have the six speakers so as always let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing this saturday morning and let's test out the clarity of this one you are somebody that i don't know strong and i'm just like damn Actually, clarity is pretty impressive. It kind of felt like it was coming in all directions, but it's kind of a smaller SUV, so I guess that's expected. But bass is decent, clarity is excellent, so kind of impressed there for a six speaker sound system. That's actually pretty nice. Anywho, last thing I wanted to mention on that tech display is when you do indeed put the escape in reverse, this is by the way, one of the things that impressed me again, all trim levels will give you a reverse camera. That's pretty normal at this point, but this reverse camera, it almost looked as if it was shot in 60 frames per second. <laughs> it was that impressive. Like usually there's a little bit of lag on that rear view camera when you're actually traveling in reverse, but it kind of looked like the frame rate was increased in this particular one. You could see a little better. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. It actually looks like a higher frames per second than I'm used to seeing in a rear view camera and other manufacturers. That was pretty cool. I actually really did like that. But as always, 
that is going to lead us into safety. And so starting out front side side curtain airbags will come standard as well as a driver's knee airbag. In the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children so you can strap in the rear car seats. Tire pressure monitoring system will come standard along with automatic high beams. Also standard on every single trim level you're going to find a pre-collision assist system with automatic emergency braking, a lane keeping system, also blind spot information system with rear cross traffic alert. That's every single trim level by the way. This usually an added option on almost all other manufacturers out there right now so that's excellent se trim level and up is also going to add adaptive cruise control sel trim level and up is going to add a reverse sensing system where the car essentially beeps at you when you get too close to an object so you don't go running it over titanium trim level is going to add rain sensing windshield wipers which will probably scare you at first but then you're going to love it because it's essentially like automatic headlamps but automatic windshield wipers so it's one last thing you have to worry about when you're driving you can better focus on your actual driving itself so that's cool active park assist 2.0 again that is with the titanium that's going to essentially be where the car brakes steers and accelerates for you putting you into a parking spot or parallel parking for you so you don't have to do any of that stuff so that's pretty cool as well but anyways that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button if you are into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys in the next video Stay go.